So the other day we looked at the best deadline day signings from every year since the January transfer window arrived in 2003. Now on this year's edition of January Transfer Deadline Day, it's time to look at some of the worst signings from each winter's transfer deadline day between 2003 and 2017, picking out those deals that just didn't quite hit the spot. In 2003, the worst January deadline day deal was Michael Ricketts to Middlesbrough. The Teesiders paid Bolton 3.5 million quid for Michael Ricketts, who had been somewhat of a consistent scorer at the Reebok. However, at the Riverside things didn't quite go as well for Ricketts, who despite winning the League Cup with Borough, managed a grand total of 4 goals in all competitions. A bad piece of business from Borough, who you should prepare to hear more from in the next 5 minutes or so. 2004's worst January deadline day deal was Ricardinho to Middlesbrough. That's right, Borough are back at it again a year later with another dud of a deadline day signing, bringing in World Cup winner Ricardinho on a short term deal. Borough fans were excited about his arrival, having been dazzled by Janinho, so another Brazilian World Cup winner could only be a good thing, right? Wrong. Rigardinho never got his chance, with reserve football being as good as it got for the midfielder. The following year, it was Eric de Jemba Jemba who took the prize for worst deadline day signing. The Cameron midfielder was a drastic signing by Manchester United, and got no better when he moved to Villa Park on deadline day in 2005, unable to nail down a place in the Villa midfield. The Jemba Jemba cost £1.5 million, made 11 Premier League appearances for the club, then was released in the summer of 2007. The worst deadline day signing from 2006 was Hossam Ghali to Tottenham. Any player that receives you're not fit to wear the shirt chance from supporters has to go down as a bad signing, and that's exactly what Hossam Ghali got during his time at White Hart Lane, having flung his shirt to the ground after being taken off. Despite his apologies, Ghali would never play for the club again. 2007 now, and we're going to give the worst deadline day signing award to Sean Maloney to Aston Villa. A second appearance for Villa, who brought in Scottish playmaker Sean Maloney from Celtic for £1 million. Maloney was brilliant under O'Neill at Celtic, but had no such luck under the spectacle wearing gaffer in the Premier League. After a season and a half in England, Maloney would call it a day, pack his bags and head back to Glasgow, returning to Celtic for £3 million. Now we move on to Yari Lippmanen, whose move to Fulham in 2008 was the worst January deadline day transfer of that year. The Finnish striker spent the peak of his career playing for Ajax, Barcelona and Liverpool, but six years after leaving Anfield, Lippmanen was back in England, signing a short term deal with Fulham. Sadly though, the forward didn't play a minute for the Cottagers, suffering from a heart issue before being released at the end of the season. The worst deadline day deal from January 2009 was Ricardo Caresma's loan to Chelsea. Having fell out of favour at Inter Milan under Jose Mourinho, Charisma arrived at Stamford Bridge on the final day of the window, much to the excitement of fans who knew all about Charisma's talents, especially from his Porto days. Sadly though, the winger made just 5 appearances for the Blues and has since been better known for his performances on the international stage. In 2010, the worst January deadline day deal was Benny McCarthy to West Ham. The South African signed from Blackburn for an undisclosed fee and McCarthy had been quite the goal getter at Awood Park well in his first season at least, where he scored 18 goals. After three and a half years with Blackburn, McCarthy headed to Upton Park, where he would fail to find the net in 14 appearances for the club, and in April 2011, he was given a £1.5 million payoff from the Hammers, who were just sick of the sight of him. On a dramatic deadline day in January 2011, it was Andy Carroll who took the title for worst deal. Fernando Torres to Chelsea was a bad one too, but at least the Spaniard gave the Chelsea fans a few incredible moments whereas Andy Carroll was almost doomed from the start at Anfield, especially due to his then British record fee of £35 million. Carroll would score just 6 league goals for the club before being sent to West Ham in 2012, with Liverpool eventually cutting their losses on the lanky striker. Thank God they signed Luis Suarez on the same day. The following year we're going to be a bit controversial and say Kevin De Bruyne was the worst signing of the day. Ok ok, we're not saying that Kevin De Bruyne is a bad footballer, far from it, for me he's the best player in the Premier League, don't at me but his move to Chelsea was just a massive flop. The Belgian didn't get a chance at Stamford Bridge, with the club eventually letting De Bruyne go before he could even make his mark, begging the question why sign him in the first place. Now De Bruyne is en route to winning the Premier League title with Man City, and Chelsea very much have a big Belgian egg on their face. In 2013, the worst deadline day deal was Chris Samba to QBR. The R's were stuck in a relegation battle so brought in Chris Samba for a big free from Anthony McCatchkiller, hoping he could stop the opposition from scoring so freely just like he'd done at Blackburn for all those years. Spoiler alert, he couldn't and Queen's Park Rangers were relegated, while Chris Samba packed his bags once again and returned to Russia, hoping he'd go full men in black and have the experience wiped from his memory. 
Next up, we've got Kostas Mitroglou, whose 2014 move to Fulham was the worst January deadline day deal. The second Fulham striker to appear on this list, the Cottagers forked out £12 million for the Greek striker as they looked to avoid relegation at the Championship, with hopes that Mitroglou could take his goal-scoring form from Olympiagos to the Premier League. Sadly for Fulham, he did not do that, making just three appearances for the club and bringing zero goals, with the season ending in relegation. Now was that because of Mitroglou's lack of goals, or the disappearance of the Michael Jackson statue outside the ground? Juan Cuadrado topped the worst deadline day deals in 2015, moving to Chelsea from Fiorentina. The Colombian way cost the Blues an initial £23.5 million and it was an absolute waste of money. Cuadrado made 14 appearances in his first season with little success, with Jose Mourinho saying he would be amazing the following season. Well, the following season, the special one sent him on loan to Juventus, where hopefully he was amazing, because otherwise Jose Mourinho is a liar. In 2016, the worst deadline day signing was Seydou Dumbira on loan to Newcastle. Steve McLaren wanted a forward to help keep Newcastle in the Premier League, and was handed speech striker Seydou Dumbira on loan from Roma. The Ivory Coast man made just three appearances from off the bench and didn't get any goals, with the Magpies ending the season with relegation, as fans wondered why the Dumbia who arrived wasn't the same one who was unstoppable on FIFA. And last year, the worst deadline day deal was Adeline Guardiola to Middlesbrough. We start and end with Middlesbrough, who brought in Guardiola last year to beef up their midfield and maintain their Premier League status. The Algerian international had become famous for some incredible goals during his days in England, but we saw none of that at the Riverside. Borough went down without a whimper, and a year on they want rid of the midfielder, who isn't even getting a look in in the championship. So those are the worst deadline day deals from every January transfer window. Let us know which you think is the worst in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.